It's Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, so today we're talking about cervical spine instability, and I'm going to start with the definition. What is cervical spine instability, specifically clinical cervical spine instability? It is the inability of the spine under normal physiological loads to maintain its normal pattern of displacement so that there is no neurological damage or irritation, no development of deformity, and no incapacitating pain. Gravity, gravity is a physiological load. It's putting compression through our spine. So like in my case, I couldn't even withstand gravity. After a certain amount of hours, I would have to lay down or put a brace on. And um, as you will see in this spine model, the reason why any amount of cervical spine instability is defined as no irritation with the nerves because as you can see, if you flex or extend the neck, that is definitely going to pinch on these nerves that run down into the arms and the hands, creating problems like pain and numbness and tingling, which I also experience. And we also have the vertebral artery that runs from the brain down into the first vertebra. And if there's any upper cervical spine instability, that can also encroach on those, causing dizziness or drop attacks. Drop attacks means that the blood supply is cut off to the brain and you can pass out. Cervical spine instability can be very dangerous and it's very unfortunate that so few doctors and medical professionals understand this. It is my passion to explain this condition because I've been living with it for seven years. If you go back, you can uh, watch some of my stories and like how I developed it. I pretty much only got answers through my own research and even when I talk to physical therapists because I am a PT, I can just tell they're not fully grasping the severity of my condition. And why I think that is, is because it is a spectrum. So for instance, the spectrum of somebody maybe has a little bit of instability, so we'll talk about it in millimeters of translation since that's what I have been educated on as far as the digital motion x-ray machine. It measures it in millimeters of translation. So a healthy spine should have very minimal, like zero maybe to one millimeters of translation, but really you don't want any translation. and. Um, Normal could be up to two if you're hypermobile. People who have clinical cervical spine instability typically have more than two or three. Um, in my case, I have 3.8, so um, that causes a lot of problems. In the physical therapy clinics, I would imagine that the majority of people who do benefit from physical therapy probably have less than 3.5 millimeters of translation because you can strengthen these deep cervical flexors and create a little extra support and stability to make up for what the ligaments are not doing because really the instability is coming from loose ligaments or damaged ligaments. These deep cervical flexor muscles help to allow for a little extra stability. So if you're going to PT, most likely they're gonna have you doing like chin tucks and or um, one of my favorite exercises was the laser. And there's a target. You just move your head side to side with the laser keeping it straight on the lines to each target. And that helps with proprioception because when our ligaments are loose, we have a lot less proprioception. And that kind of explains probably why people with this condition have so much pain when we go to move our heads and you just feel like stabbing, catching, clicking, clunking, um, pain everywhere. So, um, so the majority of people who benefit from physical therapy probably have very minor um, instability. So on the spectrum of a little bit of instability, let's say one to two millimeters, those people could probably benefit from PT, getting things uh, loosened up, the tight muscles that are overcompensating and causing spasms and pain, and then strengthening the deep cervical flexors, working on posture so that it takes the load off of the ligaments and off of the spine. Then there's people on the other far end of the spectrum who have more than 3.5 millimeters of 
instability or cervical translation. And according to the ADA, people with this amount of translation are considered to be, I think it's 25 to 28 percent disabled. So that is equal to a fusion. In my case, I didn't find out for a long time. I was in and out of physical therapy for years and it did help some. It helped to alleviate some of the pain with the very specific soft tissue release techniques as well as some strengthening. It did allow me to do a little bit more with less pain, but I was still very, very limited. Like I've had pain every single day for the last six and a half years. And if you are, if you've tried conservative methods such as physical therapy and you're still having pain, if it's been more than six months, then you probably have more instability than what physical therapy alone can help you with. And so through my research, I discovered the treatment of prolotherapy. I'm so thankful because I've already had three treatments. My pain has significantly reduced. I do experience little to no pain at rest now, but I'm still limited in what I can do. I can drive now without my arms going numb, which is awesome. I still have a very hard time with dishes. My arms do get tired or my neck does get tired when I wash my hair, brush my hair. So recently I cut my hair off, that has helped. I have difficulty lifting, pushing, pulling, opening things, even laundry, anything that's like repetitive. If I have to lift my arms, anything out here can hurt my shoulder. I get pain in both my shoulder. It can create a huge array of problems with this condition. So I'm so thankful that I have the opportunity to go see Dr. Hauser at Caring Medical in Fort Myers, Florida next month to receive my fourth treatment. It'll be my first one through him and he specializes in this condition. That's how I discovered prolotherapy as a treatment option through his research. Um, it, he does do a lot of research on the DMX, showing before and after on the thickness of the ligaments, how they're thin and stretched and um, loose, and then after injections, he shows that it does thicken and tighten these ligaments. So. Thankfully, there is a treatment, and I am so grateful to be able to get this treatment. It is very expensive. Most insurances do not cover it, unfortunately. I haven't been able to practice as a physical therapist since my injury, um, which was in 2013. So now I'm a physical therapy consult, and my goal is to educate and to help as many people as possible by explaining this condition. I hope 2020 brings everybody more health, more clarity, and just better quality of life.